Hey, hey, here I am. Look, pretty ruddy faced. I've been outside shoveling. For you guys that don't know, I guess I'd say I was reporting from Ice Station Zebra. It's like 20 inches of snow. It's a total freaking nightmare. Can't go anywhere. I'm not even sure that the heat pump is going to hold out. I've been back there shoveling, digging it out. It's now an auxiliary heat. So, but here I am. We're up for another story. I think this is number seven. The title of this story, I wrote it down, is Stephen's Big Adventure or I Spent the Night with a Man in a Skirt. And I did. But let's start at the beginning. Before we go any further, I found an image that I wanted to show you guys. And I want to kind of dedicate this whole story um, to the people that have modeled for me. Um, this was shot in the snow. Can you imagine? It's a nude figure, and she was good enough to go out in the freezing temperatures. The, the bottom of it is all white and snow covered. It was sunny, but it was snowing, and there are fish um, in the bushes, which I layered in. If I can get close there, you can see the snow all over the ground. I've had wonderful people that have modeled for me for many years. They put octopus in their mouth. They have sat on ice. They've done everything for me. So I'm dedicating uh, this whole story to them. So let's get started. Um, oh, this was just like Pee Wee's Big Adventure, but it was Steven's Big Adventure. And it was for my one show in New York. So let me show you a few pictures from the show first. It was at the Marcuse Pfeiffer Gallery, which was a great gallery. She was a wonderful um, gallery owner. Here I am. Look, I had some hair. There I am with my wife at the opening. You can kind of get a pretty good view of that. Um, for you people that know Sean, look at that child. Look at how beautiful he was. Let me get a better view of him. Look at him. Um, he was like, of course, hitting the cheese bar. Um, but look at what a child he is. Same haircut, pretty much. Uh, hasn't changed. Um, he pretty much looks about the same. Um, so anyway, the opening went very, very well. Um, got a bunch of stuff in um, the Village Voice and the New York Times did a little piece. Um, here is the announcement. Here's some images of Polaroids. Here was the actual announcement from the show with the two women um, kind of entwined. Um, it went very, very well. I got really good reviews for it. There was, again, the announcement from it. There's some stuff from the Village Voice and the New York Times and whatever. But it was a very, very cool show. Let me show you a few pictures um, from the show. Um, here we go. These are bigger images, so I'm going to back up a little bit. Um, this was kind of a figure that was shot with fabrics and... Um, another sepia-toned image. Um, this one was called Origami Girl. And it was, again, an Asian model that had this beautiful kind of gesture with her hands. Um, this was a period when I used to cover people in, if you can get a good look here, in flower. So it made the body real, real sculptural. I really kind of like these images. Um, give me a little closer. There you go. Um, here's another one where she was covered with flower. Um, I like this one. It's very sort of primordial. It, um, this was a female model that had a shaved head, and um, she was really amazing. I really like this image a lot. Um, so anyway, let's start with the story. Um, the story wasn't so much the show um, or the opening. Yeah, a lot of cool people came. It was fun. It was a great time. But the story consists of the delivery. Um, oh, man, I took a student with me. I always have students that are like, you know, I use them as assistants and I get friendly with them and they're really great people. So I needed to deliver the show. I had very large mural prints. I had to deliver the show to New York. So I took this kid with me. Um, we'll just use his initials, R.S. R.S. was a really cool kid. Um, he didn't have an apartment. He lived in a hallway on the third floor between two other students' apartments. And they would occasionally let him in and uh, let him cook his ramen noodles. And he didn't bathe very often. He was a little bit like Pigpen in Charlie Brown. Um, whenever he came over, it was like, oh my 
God, my wife was like, he stinks. But he was the sweetest kid. Um, he really was a character. At one time, he actually came over and he was real clean. And it was like, what, what are you doing? How did you get? Because he always rode his bike. He didn't have a car. And he'd come here like filthy and stinking. This time his hair was combed and he has it all clean. I said, what are you doing? He says, oh, I stopped down there at that, um, at that swimming club. Well, it was this very exclusive, ultra expensive racquetball club. And he had the stones to walk in there and take a shower. He took a shower. I said, well, didn't anybody do anything? He says, no, nobody said anything. And the other part about this kid was he was had a shocking blonde mohawk, and he always wore a skirt. He said it was a kilt, but it wasn't a, it wasn't a kilt. It was a skirt. So anyway, I take this kid with me to deliver this uh, show. Um, I was driving at the time a... Um, a Ford Escort turbocharged. <laughs> Can you a turbocharged? A bunch of the big murals went up in a truck, but I had to bring up some of the more expensive, smaller pieces. Anyway, I'm driving this thing up there. Okay, we make the delivery. Everything's cool. On the way home, the car is bucking. It's like, oh no, what's going on? Something's the matter. I mean, I hate cars and I don't know much about them and I don't know what to do. The car continues to start to break down. I decide, okay, I'm going to have to wait. It's it's like midnight. I've spent the whole day in New York. I stop in the Howard Johnson's in Mount Holly, New Jersey. <laughs> I tell this kid, wait in the car. Wait in the car. Look, I don't want to have to deal with explaining you. Just wait in the car. I'm going to go in. I go in there, and I'm like, I need a room for one. It's just for a night. You know, my car's in trouble, blah, blah, blah. The guy's like, okay. All of a sudden, I hear this, knock, 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 knock. I go up and look on the glass, and here's this kid in his skirt with the mohawk making kissy faces at the window. <laughs> Sealed up against the window. The guy behind the desk is just like, ah, uh, it's room for two, I assume. It's like, oh no. So I was like, okay, I can't explain this guy. So anyway, I take this kid into this room. What did I tell you? The kid didn't really have a home. The kid didn't even have a bed. He like slept on the floor in this like, I don't know, sleeping bag arrangement between these things. So when he got in there, it was like taking a little kid to Disneyland. He jumped on the bed the whole night. It was like jump, 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 and watch television. He's like, oh, this is great, Steven. This is great. Thank you so much for bringing me. This is great. So I'm like, I got this guy all night going crazy. And he's like raided all the machines. He's like, don't you have any more quarters? And he's like taking all my bills and getting quarters from this guy. And of course, he's continually wearing his dress. And he's got all these piercings. And this isn't like piercings back like now when people have piercings. They had like clothes pins through his cheeks. And oh, the guy was a total, total kook, but really sweet and hugely talented. Um, so that's why I sort of latched on to him. Um, anyway, the next day comes, I get in the I get in the car, it's bucking, I'm like, okay, I go to the gas station. The gas station guy says, I don't know, I think it's gonna be okay. It breaks down through the whatever, the turnstiles, whatever you call them of the New Jersey turnpike. Total frickin' nightmare. I have to get on the train with this kid. I'm on the train. I gotta I gotta take a taxi to Amtrak. Um, from Amtrak, you know. We get on the train, and he's like, oh, this is great. This is great. I gotta buy him all this stuff. I mean, it was really rather interesting, to say the least. Um, finally, we get back to Baltimore. But, you know, it's really interesting how things work out. This kid really was, uh, he told me it was one of the best days of his life. So, you know, if I have to spend the night with a man in a skirt, and it makes them happy. I guess it was all worthwhile. So anyway, you know, next time I have a show, I'll talk about it on here, and maybe some of you guys can actually attend, and you can join in in Stephen's Big Adventure. Okay, guys. Hey, thanks. I'll see everybody next time. Bye-bye.